So Nicaragua has been in a lot of different struggles. Thank God in the last 22 years, everything has been changing, but back in the 80s, that was like a dead zone right here. It was very violent, it was a lot of work going on. In 1979, that's when the Sandinista Revolution took place. So they won the power, and since 1979 until 1981, it was a lot of misunderstood and a lot of conflict going on. So we ended up having an embargo from the United States. So it was very bad. So the only help that we couldn't get was from the Soviet Union, so and from Cuba, and a little bit from other countries like Europeans. But the United States didn't want to deal with Nicaragua and didn't want to deal with the same missile crisis, uh, uh, missile crisis that was going on in Cuba back in John F. Uh, John F. Kennedy, right? So they cut us off. So, but right after 1984, we have a uh, civil war because a lot of people from Nicaragua, they were not happy how the country was run by the Sandinista, so we ended up having another war. It was very bad. Telling you the truth, right? This is the truth. This is something that I don't say, but this is true. During Ronald Reagan, Ronald Reagan uh, was the president of the United States. He was supporting the country to somehow, you know, fix the situation in Nicaragua. But, Things went out of hands because people were killing each other. Alright? So, but thank God, in 1990, then we went to democratic election. Actually, back in those days, the, the current president is Daniel Ortega. And back in those days, Daniel Ortega was the president. Daniel Ortega was the president. Was the president. So, Fidel Castro said that if this guy, if you go to democratic election, you are making the biggest mistake of your life. Because people are not going to vote for him, and that's what happened, you know. People elect a lady, and what we were doing, we were exchanging cans for food. That was a problem. People used to have, you know, a full army in their house. 10 AK-47, a lot of, you know, monotons and all the stuff. But since 1991, 1990, things has been changing and changing in a good way. 1990, the, the United States government took out the embargo, and since then, Nicaragua has been doing very well. Talking about the safety, this is the number one concern for anybody that goes to a foreign country, right? You don't want to get kidnapped. So you will never get kidnapped here in Nicaragua. If you go to Honduras or Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, probably will, I will tell you a whole different story, right? <laughs> but in the meantime, safety in Nicaragua is a number one priority, not just for us as a Nicaragua, but it's a number one priority for all our visitors. So, this is something that the police department, they, when they find something that is wrong, and uh, maybe if you have something that you should not have in your bag and stuff like that, they don't play games and then you go straight to jail. I don't know if you are familiar with laptop abroad. Yep. So that might happen to you if you do something wrong, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one thing, and I'm so glad you know that things are doing very well because you know. Correction is in every country, but in Nicaragua it's kind of different because you know everything is about ethic and everything is about principle. So the police department they play a good role about the safety, and that's why Nicaragua is one of the safety countries in Latin America. We don't have kidnapping, we don't have drug traffic and but stuff like that. Even places where they sell drugs, we don't we don't have it. And that's good because, you know, drugs destroy the society. People start to look crazy and stupid shit, you know? But in the meantime, talking about the tourism, we have a lot of people that come to Nicaragua to discover this country because what you might read in websites and what you might read in papers or what you might hear from other people's mouth is that, dude, you're going to Nicaragua, you're going to get killed. That's the first thing that they say. But once you are here, you will see a whole different you will experience a whole different thing, you know what I mean? So, now a lot of people have been coming to Nicaragua not just to know the country, also to invest in the country. So, by far, we have a lot of industry going on, like coffee, coffee is the number one. Then we have gold and silver, which is number two. We have meat, like we export a lot of meat, like cow and all the stuff to Mexico, to Venezuela, to the United States. And the fourth place, we have the tobacco industry. Talking about the tobacco industry, it plays a huge role for all the people that live in the main tobacco region, like Esteli, Jalapa, and Condega. 
Talking about Esteli, we have more than 30 different cigar factories. And you know, it amazed me that every time that I go around, I see a new little factory. You will see like 10 different people working, you know, and stuff like that. And that's good because it provides more job opportunity. We don't see each other as a competitor, you know what I mean? Because it brings more quality, and at the end of the day, people are gonna realize that Nicaragua cigar, it doesn't matter if they come from Padro, from Drew Estate, from Rocky Patel, from Nick's, Nick, uh, Nick Perdomo, and all those guys from Haya Nicaragua, it doesn't matter, you know? Because the quality is innumerable. If you have a lot of competition going on, a lot of people will start to do their best to release great smoke, you know what I mean? So, it also provides you a lot of job opportunity. So in another, in another hand, the Tabaco Valley in Jalapa, in Jalapa, which is the tobacco region, this is made not to be only for farming. So you will see a lot of endless, just endless tobacco fields. So this tree, we are not, we are not going to Jalapa because it's three hours away from Esseli, like four hours away from Esseli. So you know, the, the trip is kind of short. But that's something very important. Now, how we have set up the tour of Cigar Safari, we combine tourism and we combine cigars and tobacco. So, when people come, they usually want to come again and again and again and again. You see what I'm saying? So you might ask my friend right here, Tim Pawica, he has been coming to Nicaragua how many times? Six times. So, I'm not bullshitting, you know what I mean? Yeah. 